Hello, it is Thursday, January 26th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. I'm off to quite a late start today because I've just spent, <laughs> it feels like hours, maybe maybe it was an hour, but um, uh, recreating my, my recording setup on a Mac, which is, I've been meaning to do for months because for many years I've, I've done audio recording, um, you know, music and podcasts and things like that on uh, in the Mac environment, but I've, for reasons not worth explaining, I've been recording these uh, crossword videos on my PC and I figured I really need to centralize where I do that sort of thing. So I finally did that today. I'm hoping that from your end, it won't appear any different. I hope it looks and sounds the same. Let me know if anything seems amiss. Um, the question mark, I suppose, will be the um, uh, little medley, that the little um, jingle that plays upon completing the crossword, which I finally figured out how to get working on the Mac. So that should be fine, but but do, do leave a comment if anything is uh, seems out of place. In any case, this experimental edition of uh, The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Matt R., Tom Nemchek, Jake Rodkin, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support in bringing us this series, this channel, in sustaining this whole endeavor. I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks as a benefactor and get access to the Daily Solve Let's check the crosses mug. You can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, by following that same link, you can get, uh, well, you can become a patron at any level you choose and get all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So do enjoy those if you're a patron. Thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. It does keep this thing going, and I do very much appreciate that. Uh, do also subscribe to the channel that helps keep this going as well by by encouraging the YouTube algorithmic uh, robot to recommend it to more people. And you could also recommend it to more people yourself as a an ordinary human being. Thank you if you have done that. And um, yes, yeah, so do subscribe. Uh, all right, let's get on to the puzzle. This is a collaboration of a crossword constructed by Dan Ziering and Chiara Vasquez. Dan Ziering... Um, a second-time New York Times constructor, and Kira Vasquez, a first-time constructor. So two relative newcomers to the New York Times anyway. And uh, let's find, and it's a Thursday puzzle, so there will be some sort of theme that we'll have to uncover. We'll have to find out what that is. It, it does look like a somewhat unusual pattern of black cells in the grid, but we'll, we'll just have to see. In any case, it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. All right, this is an unusual pattern. Uh, pattern in the grid. Well, it's vertically symmetrical for one thing. It's symmetrical about a vertical axis. So if we folded the grid um, along a line, dividing dividing it in two vertically, we would we would obviously see the same disposition of black cells on each side. But um, but yes, hard 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 to know what that means just yet. Gradually develop, literally, literally to grow. Why is it literally? Pop, pop. Oh, Gramps? I'm trying to think how we'd fit that in six letters. I think that would work. Uh, it could be Grandpa, I suppose. I would usually spell that G-R-A-N-D-P-A, but the pop, pop puts a sort of slangy cast on it. That means this could work as well. Aptly named mascot of the 2000 Olympics. Boy, I just sort of certainly don't remember that. Things you might save while driving. Save. What would you save while driving? I mean, it could be something silly, like, well, not silly, punny, like, um, you know, go, driving in the sense of golf, but I don't know. Sierra Blank, Mexican range informally. Uh, the Sierra Madre? Hmm. Last monarch of the House of Stuart. Who would have been the last Stuart monarch? Queen Anne? Um, farm storehouse. Not sure. Not a silo, obviously. Punished for the weekend, perhaps. 
Punished for the weekend, perhaps. What does that mean? No idea. Beer containers. This isn't looking very good. Aunt Queen Anne, especially with that A there, this must be correct. This could be wrong, I suppose. Sushi staple that isn't served raw. Eel? Um, okay, yeah, that does work. Jean-Luc Picard of Star Trek was the um, Patrick Stewart character. So, yeah, I mean, eel isn't served raw. As far as I know, that doesn't happen. Uh, things you might save while driving. Save. I just do not know what that's looking for. Quantity contrasted with a vector in physics. Um, I don't know. There will be people who get this instantly. I don't, I'm not among them. Uh, let's go over here. Doozy, a real doozy, a real Lulu, a real one -er. Those are things you occasionally see in crosswords. Um, one might hit a very low pitch. This could be an instrument. I mean, it looks like it would refer to baseball, but... I wonder if it's a some sort of bass instrument. A bass tuba? I don't really think you need to specify bass tuba. Um, this probably ends with an S because it says things. It looks plural. Quantity contrasted with a vector. This will probably be obvious when I see it, but I just, just not, <laughs> I don't really encounter physics equations or, or principles commonly enough for it to be the sort of thing at the front of mind for me. Um, leaves in the kitchen, tea leaves or what other sort? I mean, salad, is it as simple as that? Oh, a scalar, a vector and a scalar. Right, one of those um, is sort of direction specific and the other isn't. A, a vector, I suppose, would have a directional component and a scalar wouldn't. Is that right? I mean, again, I am just have I have no education or sort of professional overlap with physics, so this is just really not confident. But but it's something it's something to that effect. Many of you will, will, will know better than I. Shakespearean cries. Ah, oh, what's Shakespearean? Um, not sure. F yeah, what would be what would be a cry that's specific enough to Shakespeare that that this clue would make sense? I mean, it wouldn't be something like "ah" because that's such a generic cry. There'd be no reason to specify Shakespearean. I don't know why that would be either. Foxy could be sly. Maybe this isn't salad. I do think scalar is probably right, though. Oh, developing phenomena literally de depicted three times in this puzzle. Interesting. Okay, I just don't have nearly enough to get to that. There was this develop, yeah, gradually develop, literally. This might be part of the theme. Um, boy, I don't know. Let's keep going. Gradual, oh. Oh, gradually develop, literally. Well, this obviously won't be grow because we've already put that in the puzzle. That also suggests this one might not be, because this one could be the, the grow, or neither of them could be, I suppose. I did like the G here for gramps, though. Let's, I'll just keep looking around for now. Oh, Cuba's Raul. Why didn't I look at this? Cuba's Raul Castro, brother of Fidel. There we go. That's a good solid get. Farm storehouse. Punished for the weekend. What on earth is this? I have I, I just don't even really know what the concept is. So, you know, it's not that I sort of understand what it wants, but I just can't think of the answer. I'm just not even sure what this is suggesting. This also looks completely wrong. Raul and Anne both look correct. Oops. Two heads of state, I suppose. That's kind of a funny parallel. Uh, beer containers are flagons. I'm sure Anne is correct. Okay, this does sort of look like there's this E of Sierra Madre's beer containers. Sorry, I, I know this is not a very impressive solve so far. Punished for the weekend, perhaps. Farm storehouse. A, a granary? 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 That's a storehouse. 
maybe we're maybe we're growing the word grow gradually. Oh, that looks like gr grounded. I see what this means. A teenager, for instance, is being punished for the weekend by being grounded, not not being permitted to leave the home. So if this is gro growler, growlers are are sort of large, um, you know, be, um, beer containers. Oh goodness. Okay. So this is Gramps or Grandpa, aptly named mascot of the two thousand. Oh, it must have been that must have been Sydney Olympics. So the mascot, I suppose, was named Sid. I didn't remember that offhand, but that. That seems plausible. Okay, so things, wow. Okay, so look at this, right. So here we have gradually develop, literally. <laughs> we have grow, growing. It's also sort of funny. This is presumably not not intentional, but but just the way that the, the, the software scales the text to fit it in. Each individual font size is actually, it, well, each cell has a progressively smaller font size. So in a way, the letters themselves are doing the opposite of growing, they're shrinking. I don't think that's sort of relevant to the theme other than as a funny coincidence. But in any case, we're growing the word grow. So that's what the literally is doing. So gradu to gradually develop is to grow. And then the sort of literally here is that we're growing that word. There we, all right, there we go. So I don't know if this is going to be another grow or if, it'll be, if it will be another word to which we're applying the same kind of operation. So, but we'll get there in a moment. Let's keep going to this. Things you might save while driving. Oh, presets. I see sort of like radio presets. Um, you know, you could have, you, you could have sort of, um, you know, sometimes car radios will save five different station tunings or something. Okay. One might hit a very low pitch. Okay. This does look like tuba, doesn't it? Leaves in the kitchen. Oh, basil. Okay. There we go. So Foxy does look like Sly. Okay, so Shakespearean cries might must be eyes or A's eyes, I suppose. Um, I don't remember specifically why that would be Shakespearean, but it, it must be, you know, there must be a notable instance or or more, more than one perhaps of a character crying that out in Shakespeare. Most like a wallflower. Sh the shyest person would be the one most like a wallflower. Um, more aged as some cheeses. Stinkier, maybe? No. More aged as some cheeses. Softer? No, I mean, more aged cheese tend to, tend to be harder. Um, watch it. Hey, put a fork in it. Now, the, the um, exclamation point here, what this usually means is that instead of being a definition or a synonym, the exclamation point usually suggests you read the clue as though it's being said about the the thing that's the answer. So if it, I mean, this this obviously isn't the answer here, but just as an oh, maybe it's hey. So in other words, put a fork, put a pitchfork in it. You could say about about the hay, but it obviously doesn't define it. So I think that maybe that's the answer. Comicdom's Queen of the Jungle. Is there a character She-Ra or something that sort of sounds... I feel like I've seen images of sort of pulpy comic strips with that character. I'm, it's just kind of vaguely familiar. I think that might be right. High quality is... I'm not sure... Total phony. Don't know. I kind of. I do kind of want to confirm or deny Shira here. Some surgical tools. Oh, and and these. Right. I have to remember these are these are presumably going to be increasingly long rebus cells. Oh, and I didn't really explain that. Sorry. So if you didn't know what was going on here, there's this rebus function in the New York Times crossword, and that allows you to enter an arbitrary number of letters into a single cell. Um, every time I explain this, there's there are people in the comments who entirely understandably are not familiar with this concept and are very surprised to see it, as I'm sure I was when I first encountered it. Um, and so you go into rebus mode and then you can type as many letters as you want. And um, some people often also ask, how do you know when you're meant to do that? And the answer is you, you just have to determine it through context as I did. I mean, as you saw, it took me quite a while of of bashing my head against this corner of the grid before I understood what was going on, which does appear to have been, been borne out. 
Um, all right. Anyway, I'm just reminding myself that this will be a single letter most likely, but these will will be two, three, and four letters respectively. Um, so some surgical tools. I'm wondering if I could. Is there any way it could grow more than one per? I mean, could it be one cell here, three, then five, then seven, allowing me to put in scalpels? I mean, I could be reaching quite a bit to do that. Trademarked coffee holder. No idea what that's looking at. Like many indie films. Yeah, I, I don't think this is correct, but many arty maybe. Um, trademarked coffee. What is that? I don't even. I don't understand what that means. Trademarked coffee holder. Coffee holder. I have, I have no idea what that's referring to. It'll probably be very obvious when I see it, but I, I don't know right now. Boom producer once. An SSD supersonic transport? Like the Concorde, the um, the, the uh, British Airways and Air France um, supersonic passenger jet. Apparently there are some more supersonic jets in production right now. Well, not in production, sorry, in development. As far as I'm concerned, hmm, enormous amounts to spend. And if you remember, this could be several letters. So what would this be? Enormous amounts to spend. Fortunes. Oh, maybe this isn't she because this could be fortunes. This would be three letters, which is how many we're expecting there. Um... Form. Form is to gradually develop. There we go. Okay. It is just four letters again. Sorry, I know this has been an incredibly inefficient solve. Uh, oh, forceps are surgical tools. There we go. Trademarked coffee holder. Some sort of cup. I, is there a sort of eye cup or something goofy like that? I have no idea. As far as I'm concerned, for my part, there we go. That worked out well. Oh, K cup. That's those um, those little pods. Is it Keurig or something that I think manufactures those? Or, or yeah, those are those are. You see those more and more frequently these days. Um, I think that's what that is. So total total phony is a faker. Oh, okay. So maybe I was maybe it was Sheena, not Shira. Okay, I, I might have been confusing two characters because isn't there also a a Shira character from a sort of 1980s cartoon, I think, as well. So I, I might just have been mixing up two things. Um, this looks right, or plausible anyway. More aged as some cheese. Oh, sharper, right. So as they also, as they harden, they often also become sharper. Um, high quality is top shelf. There we go. As in alcohol, top shelf alcohol. Literally, I mean, you know, traditionally would be on the higher shelves. Um, doozy, yeah, I still don't know about that. Kind of group in chemistry, amino acids? Don't know if that's what I'm looking for. I'm just, it works with the O. Barber's belt, oh, a strop that the barber uses to, um, uh, you know, sort of hone or sharpen their, their blade. One might hit a very, okay, I guess it is base tuba. Okay, shame on me for not, for not thinking that made sense. Many an essential worker for short. An EMT, an emerg emergency medical technician, I think. Um, put on is to air, is not to broadcast a television program to put it on? Game in which the object is to score 500 points. Um, I did not know this, but I guess it's the game of Uno. And yes, a doozy is a butte, a real butte, a real doozy. There we go. Okay, right, so we're back to this, which I ignored earlier because I didn't understand what the theme was yet, but developing phenomena literally depicted three times in this puzzle. It looks like maybe it's a word that ends on this L and then starts here. Maybe not. Um, not sure. Let's look at some crosses. Ink holder, a, an ink pot. Kind of power in math. The nth power? I, I don't really think that's right. Um, what is a kind of power in math? I'm not sure what that what that means. I'm not sure if it means an exponent, like two to the power of eight, you know, eight, but two to the power of eight, I mean, I'm not sure if that's what it's looking for or something else. Oops, oh, right. <laughs> because I'm using a different computer, I've not yet set my, my settings to 
um, space bar should toggle between across and down, which is what I, which is what I prefer. There we go. And actually, yes, okay, it does skip over the letters. All right. So one way an animal may be held. An animal may be held. I don't know. Chin wagging. If you're chin wagging, you're sort of. I don't know, maybe slightly snobbish or judgmental or um, oh no 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 chin wagging is chin wagging sort of scolding someone or is it talking and talking and talking? I actually <laughs> now I'm getting it confused. Well let's just keep going. In a bind tied I'm wondering if it's literally tied up or if it could be well I guess tied up is both literal and idiomatic. It could mean busy. Or in a bind, it could mean in trouble. Troubled? It doesn't really work. The gateway to the west. Oh, this is a city. I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's, I would have thought maybe St. Louis or something. I don't know. Shaving can fall. Shaving gel or sh a foam? Shaving foam. Oh, is it Omaha? Is Omaha the gateway to the west? Crestfall. If you're crestfallen, you're sad. There we go. All time go between. All okay. So <laughs> this is just a little, a tiny little linguistic pun. So it's just this means a go between, a word that literally goes between the words all and time. So all the time becomes a phrase uh, on its own right. So all time and all the time, both phrases. Uh, big name in juice pouches. Oh, Cap Capri Sun makes these sort of foil metallic. Um, I assume sort of sugary juice drinks. I remember, I mean, I remember having them as a child occasionally, and I'm pretty sure they were sort of sweetened juices. Okay, developing phenomenon literally depicted three times in this puzzle. So something the effects, um, snowball effects. Maybe this isn't pot. So the snowball effect, it's, it's so funny. It's actually very difficult to see these physically as snowball effects because they do appear to be getting smaller. It sort of looks like a reverse snowball effect in a way. But but yes, it does make sense because the words themselves are, are getting larger as it, you know, in the in the as is often depicted with a snowball rolling down a mountain and picking up more snow as it goes. Okay, so very good. So there's our revealer, and we'll get uh, presumably two more of these down here. Oh no, no, we won't. But we'll get them somewhere else. Didn't it say, oh, three times in this puzzle, we'll get one more somewhere, maybe here? Yes, here it is. Symmetrical, I, I, because I was thinking it would be symmetrical. So these two are, are symmetrical with one another, and then the third one would be in the center of the grid. Okay, an ink holder, I don't know. It'll be obvious when I see it, I'm sure. Kind of power in math. Maybe it is the nth power. I just wouldn't have thought that's a kind. I would have thought that is a specific power, not a kind of power. But maybe nth makes it more vague because n is un undefined. One way an animal may be held, chin wagging, in a bind, trapped. There we go. Google blank service begin beginning in 2017. I have no idea. Google chat, maybe? A uh, bunch of bits. A byte. Eight, eight bits in a byte in, in computing. Oh, an animal may be held at bay. So an aggressive animal might be held at bay. Right, okay. And an ink holder is a sack. Oh, maybe, so this maybe is an anato sort of anatomical um, reference. Like, you know, maybe ink, a, a sort of squid's ink sack or something like that. And early 2000s. Sorry, early 2010s. I don't know why I said 2000s. Early 2010s. I don't, oh, the Obama era, maybe. There we go. That makes sense. And, um, oh, chin wagging is chatter, right, okay. So my, my revised thought about that, that it was possibly uh, not, not scolding, but rather, because I was thinking, mm -mm -mm, thinking that sort of thing, but it's more the wagging of your chin as a result of you talking somebody's ear off. You might make waves when you lie about this. Water something, you might, I'm assuming this has to do with literal waves in the water rather than making waves idiomatically, in other words, causing attention. Oh, Google Meet. Is that is that their video conference thing? Probably. And fabled visitors to 49 Down in Brief. It looks like ETs, extraterrestrials. And then 49 Down is Southwest City. 
oh, 1947 news, right? This is a very clever way to do this. I love this. These This compound answer, well, maybe not a compound answer, but these, these, these two answers that refer to one another are bracketing this element of the rebus. So Roswell, New Mexico, of course, famous as the purported site of uh, an alien visitation. So here we have swell and that, that sort of gives it to us in one. So we can then go ahead and type in our growth. That was great. That was a really a really fun conclusion to this theme in a way because it was it was such a um, you know Roswell is such an iconic location when it, in, in this respect that it, it just it slotted right in there. All right, opposite of dry to a vintner. So um, dry and sweet, you could have a dry wine, less sweet, and a sweet wine, obviously more so. Um, and a vintner being a vine, vine grower. So evidencing physical exertion could be sweaty. Um, you're showing evidence of physical exertion, you're, you're sweaty. Suffer in the summer heat is to swelter. I'm sweltering in this heat and I'm all sweaty as a result of it. Those must have a similar etymological root, I would think. Okay, let's eat. Uh, French season uh, is a taste summer. And uh, Norse god of war, Tyr. Okay, that wouldn't have been one I could have pulled out of my hat without crosses, but fortunately we got the crosses. All right, this looks like Omar. Yes, name hidden in oleomargarine. So the name Omar is indeed uh, hidden up, hidden in there. Fairly straightforward clue. Fried food whose name translates to breaded must be an empanada. That makes sense. Uh, I did not know that though. Oh, it kind of makes sense though because panna obviously is, you know, as as with many Romance languages that that derives from, I, I, I presume the Latin for bread, and then M I assume sort of means, you know in the way that it, it does, again, in a number, a number of languages, has something to do with being inside of something or surrounded by something or, or being kind of made of a particular thing. That's very good. I never never thought about that. Company originally founded as Blue Ribbon Sports, so it must be Nike, or Nike, as it tends to be pronounced here in the UK, which I have to admit grates on my ears a bit. A spot for firing is a kiln. At last singer James the Great Etta James. If, some, if someone is the real deal, you could say that person has, she's the real deal. She has it. It being that indefinable quality of success or stardom. Hem's partner, you could hem and haw to avoid making a decision. A butterfly, but not a caterpillar, is an adult because definitionally a caterpillar is a sort of larval stage, I suppose, of a butterfly. Are you down for this? Wanna? So, you know, slangy wave contracting that whole phrase. Do you want to do this? Well, an equivalent phrase. Way off could be afar. Screen display. What would a screen display be here? I'm not sure. Kerfuffle of, that isn't really a kerfuffle, a feud? It's not really a kerfuffle per se. I'm not sure. You might make waves when you lie about this. Yeah, so I see the water and waves bit. I'm just, I'm just not exactly sure what the rest of it is, is sort of trying to imagine this situation being described, and I'm not really sure what it is. A commoner could be, what, a serf or a peasant or a peon or um, a plebe? Plebeian? Oh, a waterbed. I see, right. You, you lie in a waterbed and then waves are created that ripple out from, from you, from the impression you've created in the bed. Okay, there we go. A kerfuffle, oh, a flap, there we go, there we go. A kerfuffle is indeed a flap, all right. And kitchen gadget with an edge could be a parer, so, a, you know, for paring vegetables or fruits. Screen display, oh, apps, I suppose, just a number of apps on the screen. And a hole maker is a spade, you could, um, make holes in the ground with a spade, presumably. And then a palindromic word in classic poetry would be air. So as we often have um, observed in the puzzle, air is a sort of poetic word um, meaning before in poetry. And is this the solution? Yes. All right. Do let me know if that jingle came through at, at an appropriate volume. I did do some tests beforehand, but I remember when I got my previous setup all up and running, that was the 
that bit did take a few days of calibration ultimately. In any case, let's admire this puzzle. That was, this is going to be a theme that I suspect is going to be difficult for people who are not accustomed to, uh, maybe not expecting, but to not accustomed to considering the possibility of the presence of rebuses. I, rebuses are obviously a, they're not an intuitive element of a crossword, I would say. Uh, you, you have to know they're there simply by because you have encountered them before and you know that they're a possibility. And uh, I know that that does always take some people by surprise. So I'm very curious to know how people did with this puzzle in general. I think other than that, it it was not a particularly challenging Thursday puzzle. But if you really struggled with getting this theme, of course, it would hold you up for quite some time. Um, especially down in places like this where there's not very much communication going on with this interior little uh, chunk and the outside grid. And even here, there actually isn't a huge amount. And some of the communication is proper nouns like Sheena and Madre. So that, that makes it even more difficult if you, if you can't identify those, those names. Actually, here we had Raul and, and Madres and Sid, right? All in this, in this little corner, in this, in this uh, sort of northwest corner of the grid, we had four proper nouns. I mean, obviously, Madres can mean mothers generically in Spanish, but in this context, it was a proper noun. Um, quite a few in the grid in general, because here's Luke as well, Sheena, K-Cup is a brand name, um, Omaha is a city, um, Nike in this context is a brand name. Yeah. Uh, Tear is the name of a god. Right. So actually quite a lot of uh, of names in this puzzle. In any case, um, I, I, I really enjoyed that theme. I have to say, I, I know that rebuses are very divisive among solvers and some people can't stand them. I really like them, I suppose, because I've solved so many of these crosswords that I just sort of enjoy having to make those somewhat lateral leaps. Um, but that's just me. Let me know how you fared with it. And uh, let me know if the video turned out uh, uh, ordinarily, <laughs> as you'd expect it. Uh, my hope is that you, if I hadn't mentioned anything, you wouldn't have noticed a difference. That's my, that was my hope, but we'll see. In any case, I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday edition of the puzzle, and I can almost promise you there will be no rebuses in that puzzle. They do not tend to exist in Friday puzzles. I'm sure there have been exceptions. Most likely tomorrow won't be one, but there's only way to, one way to find out, and that's to join me for tomorrow's edition of The Daily Solve. I hope you do, but until, until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.